Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. What a thrill to have you all here tonight. Tonight we celebrate, it's been 55 years since Elvis Presley returned to live performing in Las Vegas. I think the opening night was July 31st, 1969, that Elvis hit the stage again. We put together a show tonight that I, I did some uh, research and looked at all of Elvis's set lists all in 1969 and 1970, and with a few uh, exclusions for continuity, I tried to put together the best set order that was as close to what Elvis was doing that could make sense with the footage that we have and so that we could do a presentation that would be very much like Elvis was doing in Las Vegas in 1969 and 1970. Very, very thrilled to have with us on stage um, two men that were on stage with Elvis in the beginning. Uh, tonight we have both Jim Mary and Terry Blackwood from the Imperials. And um, we also uh, shanghaied Larry Strickland because he spent, he spent plenty of time with Elvis in Las Vegas over the years, and so he'll be here as well. So we've been able to recreate that wall of sound that Elvis Presley loved to have on stage with all of these incredible vocalists. It's going to be uh, quite a spectacle tonight. Uh, of course, things that you've seen before, but we tried to do something a little new, and uh, uh, the best thing that we could do was to try to make a new cut where you keep Elvis on screen as much as possible, because what's better than more Elvis? And the answer to that is even more Elvis. And so... Uh, <laughs> so we've done we've done that, and uh, with some other technology, we've improved uh, the sound and stuff like that. So I think you're going to love the show tonight as we return to Vegas. Now I only know the stories that I've heard about uh, when Elvis returned to live performing and why he did it and all that. But I thought, well, maybe I should bring somebody out who was there and who knows what was going on and who was there opening weekend. And so please make welcome our good friend, Mr. Jerry Schilling. So, <laughs> so Steve Leppard, this guys. is uh, Jerry is using uh, Larry Strickland's microphone, and he doesn't talk very loud, as a lot of you folks know. Um, I don't sing, and he doesn't <laughs> sing until tonight. And no, so come out here to the middle here, Jerry Schilling. Um, you told me that um, that Lisa Marie used to always call you Jerry Schilling. Jerry Schilling. <laughs> I always called her Memphis. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. We, uh, I told a story um, about Jerry Schilling. I was, uh, we were talking when I was 43. I was going through some stuff in my life, and I'm talking to Jerry, and we're, we're sitting around in Las Vegas, actually, at yep. uh, what used to be the International. And uh, Jerry says, how old are you? And I said, well, I'm 43. I was 43 at the time. And he said, uh, uh, Jerry's, uh, he's, he's older than me. He just looks younger than me. There's nothing <laughs> I can do about that. And Nor me. And he said to me, he said, yeah, I remember when the colonel was 85. And I said, first of all, I don't have any other friends that can say that. <laughs> and then he said, the colonel said, I wish I was 60 years old again. There's so much left that I want to do. And, I, and why 60? Well, now I understand what colonel meant. <laughs> Trust me. Uh, do you have any other fun stories? Oh, here's a fun story. Here's a fun story. It's all about the fact that you have a, this head of hair that I don't have, and you're a couple years older than me. That's a fun one. Um, all right, so here's the thing. Opening weekend, um, you were with Elvis. You flew into Vegas for opening weekend at the International Hotel. Yep. And so you were there with Elvis. Now, this was the first time that Elvis returned to live performing in about nearly 10 years since he had been doing live performances. What kind of shape was he in? Was he nervous? Was he a wreck? Was he excited? Was he all of the above? He was all of the above, and Elvis was always nervous before a show. But uh, I had never seen him this nervous because this was his love, you know? And he did the 68 comeback special as part of it as a test, would he be accepted to go back on the road? Because he had missed touring, he wanted, we had made plans, he wanted to, after, you know, to tour overseas, he knew he had, he had fans around the world. 
But this was the do or die. And I don't know if you ever see some footage later on, how nervous. When Elvis was nervous, all of us guys were nervous. I mean, I'm, I'm walking around, you know, what am I nervous about? I'm not going on stage. <laughs> but yeah, he, he, was quite, <laughs> he was quite nervous. What about you? I mean, there you had been spending all this time with Elvis for quite some time, from the time when you met Elvis when you were very young to all the years working with Elvis and Hollywood and all that. Now this is taking a different turn. You're almost taking a different role on by being there with Elvis then. How was that for you? Well, you know, when he first started, and I became friends with him 70 years ago last month. Um, <laughs> Thank you. I feel the same way. And, um, but I was too young, obviously, when he went on the road. And there was all that excitement. And I saw, the, I was at the Russwood Park show here, saw some shows. I was at the bottom of the Chisco Hotel when Dewey Phillips had his show. And they wouldn't let us in, me and my friend, because we were too young and they had alcohol. So Elvis would take a break, Chisco Hotel downtown, and he would come out and he called my friend Penrod because I brought him to the football games. And he would take a break and we'd go get him a Coca-Cola. So that was the extent of me seeing Elvis on stage. And years, so 10 years later I go to work for him and he's doing the movies. And it was really exciting and fun. But you know, some of them weren't the ones that were really exciting Elvis. And, I thought, Jesus, I have really, you know, missed the real exciting live days. Until opening weekend in 1969, and when he walked on that stage, not only was he still the rebel of the 50s, but he had matured, and his voice was greater, and his routines and whatever. And I thought, boy. I didn't miss anything. <laughs> so it was great. It was great. Well, Jerry, thank you for being here tonight and sharing your memories of that opening weekend. We're going to let these folks uh, enjoy Elvis's return to Vegas tonight. I'm going to ask the uh, band and singers to come on out and take the stage. And Larry, you can start the program whenever you're ready. Enjoy Elvis' return to Vegas. believe we were going to do anything with Elvis and then after getting to Vegas and, and going into the showroom for rehearsals and whatnot mm -hmm. it was just mind-blowing because then we met a whole lot of new people like the Colonel and the TCB band and all it was just oh, amazing and we sat and waited for him to come in and he was late he wasn't late but he just made his self appearance mm -hmm. late and uh, came in and gave each one of us a special kiss. Yeah. I, 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 didn't, I didn't know what to do. I really didn't. I didn't. Uh, we were waiting to do rehearsal. There were four of us then. Sissy Houston was with us at the time. And we're sitting there on the stage, and we heard this, this bumbling of noises coming down, guys walking and talking. and. We knew Elvis was coming, and he walked onto the stage, and he came over to us. He already knew the TCB band because they had rehearsed with him already, but this was our first meeting. And he came over, and he kissed each one of us, and he knew our names. And, and from then on, it was like, you just, you just thought, this is the most amazing guy. He didn't, he didn't really know us. He had heard our record, and that's how we got hired, but he, um, he, was, a, he, he was amazing. And so I mentioned earlier this evening, 
uh, that you would see some people that were on stage with Elvis in Las Vegas back in 1969, 1970, and beyond. You probably saw them as very, very young versions up on that screen right there. They're still young today. Let's say hello to Jim Murray and Terry Blackwood of the Imperials. First of all, Jim, what a thrill and an honor to have you here on stage with us. Again, we had you here just a few years ago. What a thrill to have you here. Well, Say thank hey. You, thank you, Andy. It's a real joy to be here. It's a great joy to see everybody singing along and uh, just enjoying the music. It's amazing to me that is it, when Elvis left us that I'm sure he could never comprehend that this was going to happen. But isn't this great? It's the best. Uh, Jim, since you, uh, you guys were there, I, you see a lot of footage there in some of the interview parts where we see you guys rehearsing with Elvis. We're, we're a lot younger. Back, back <laughs> now, then. yeah. Um, yes. Now we see you guys rehearsing with Elvis and all. The process and building up to singing with Elvis in Las Vegas, was it kind of nerve-wracking? Did he push you kind of hard, or was it a little more like fun? It, well, it was both. Eight hours a day, wow. we rehearsed everything from beginning top to bottom. And, uh, in fact, he wore a hole in the carpet at the International Hotel. That is the truth. <laughs> they had to replace the carpeting. And, uh, but we, we just, he had so much energy. He had to get it out of himself. And he brought us along for the ride. So it was really great. Terry Blackwood, um, your family name. <laughs> Among other things, I mean, your family name alone is probably uh, the biggest name in gospel music there's ever been. That's the name Blackwood, and uh, we're always thrilled that we get to have it. Yeah, and you hear that. You. It's a thrill to have uh, that kind of gospel music royalty here on stage, and, mm -hmm. and you're certainly, I know you don't think yourself that way, but we I don't do. think that way. I, mo <laughs> I mowed the grass last week and weed eat it, so I feel like a regular guy. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can't I can't argue with that, but I, but I, I can say this that we think of you as gospel music royalty, and that is the truth, right? And um, Terry Blackwood, you're you're also one of the greatest singers in gospel music history. Everybody knows that as well. We're just thrilled that you're here with us tonight. Now I'm looking up there, and I'm seeing a very young uh, Terry Blackwood, yeah. and uh, and still looking pretty much the same. And I asked you what it is you're drinking. I want some of it. Um, <laughs> He said it's water with lemon. That, that was it. Water with lemon. No beer. <laughs> That's just me. I'm just, uh, I love water with lemon. And, and I just want to say this. I have been, uh, I've been, not been here for five years to Graceland. And it is such a joy to see all of you wonderful people again after so many years. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Terry, um. We've, we've known each other a long time now, and I, I know you to be, as a vocalist and as a music guy, I know you to be a perfectionist. And um, we, uh, so when you're working with Jim and with Armand and, and uh, I guess Roger was in Roger the group Wild, and, yeah. and Joe Mascaro, uh -huh. and, and uh, uh, when you guys were working on all of this stuff, who was the one that was holding everybody's feet to the fire to get it right? Was that you? <laughs> it was me. <laughs> I, I have a thing about perfection. I mean, I, I want to always give the people, give you people the very best that we can give you. And that requires rehearsals, many rehearsals. And that's what Elvis wanted to do. He wanted to give you his very best. So uh, that's what I am. I'm a perfectionist. To a fault, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, uh, it's just a thrill, obviously, to have you guys here. And also to have Johnny Minnick over here Johnny and Manick. Jamie Parker as your yeah. Imperials tonight. Just fantastic. Yeah. These guys are amazing singers. Well, a lot of folks, I've listened to Jamie sing as long as I can remember. And he told me that he went to hear me when he was a kid. Yeah. And I'm thinking... I don't know how that happened. You were at Liberty Land. At <laughs> I was at the yeah. little amusement park we used to have yeah. here. And, uh, and then Johnny Minnick, you guys would know him from Happy Goodman family and uh, as a pastor and evangelist and such a great singer. A thrill to have this vocal group here with us tonight, especially to have you guys up there from the beginning. Now, Larry Strickland, you old hack. <laughs> um, now, Larry, uh, you joined Elvis. What year did you join Elvis? In 74. 1974. Could you say yes. that lower, please? <laughs> <laughs> uh, 1974. There it is. There it is. There it is. <laughs> okay. So, 
Elvis was still, uh, I know you guys were touring most of the time, but Elvis was still returning to Las Vegas quite a bit, right? Yeah, we, we worked Vegas a lot. How was, uh, how was that? How was working in Vegas with Elvis in the mid-70s like that? Um, it was beautiful. It was wonderful. We, we, it was the easiest work that you can have because you're not traveling every night, you know, from uh, gig to gig. You come downstairs from your hotel room and you go into the showroom, do the show, and then go, go back to bed. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so it was, we didn't, actually, we didn't really go back to bed. That's a lie. No. Do you remember how many, how many shows, when you, would, uh, when you guys were performing in Vegas, how many shows were you doing? Were you doing like a, uh, on weekends, would you do an, a matinee? Would you do a show at no, a dinner show, the midnight show? What were you, were you still doing that in the late, in the mid-70s? Yeah, yeah, we'd do, uh, on the weekends was a dinner show and, uh, and then a, a, a late, a late night show. Yeah. So <laughs> does that help you sing bass? Does that help you sing the low parts better by staying up half the night? Or is it harder for you that way? Um, yeah, if you stay up half the night, you're going you're gonna to be talking low and singing low. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so ladies and gentlemen, another one of those uh, seemingly royalty here in, uh, when it comes to gospel music, Mr. Larry Strickland. All right. So we will uh, we'll continue on with the show in a second, but I also want to point out that we have Savannah Morris back here, and we have Donna Rhodes Morris. Um, if you were at the show on uh, this past uh, Tuesday night when we had the Elvis uh, Memphis Sessions show, I reminded everybody that Donna Rhodes Morris probably has sung on just as many, if not more, Elvis records than most people, and that's, that's her vocal on a lot of the great Elvis records that you hear. So once again, thank you, Donna, for thank being you. here. All right. All right, let's, uh, let's get back to the show, and Elvis is still returning to Las Vegas. All right, Larry. Six foot six stood on the ground, weighed 235 pounds, but I saw the giant of a man brought down to his knees by love. He felt he was building a team of people that were the best in the business for his show. And so I counted it an honor that he would include me in that, in that uh, roster of people. We were in Las Vegas at the International Hotel par uh, practicing. And we practiced a full month before we ever stood on stage. And uh, I remember the, all the singers were on one section and the rhythm section was in another area. He was in the middle with a microphone and in the middle of rehearsal, he just stopped and stomped his foot. He said, I don't know what's wrong with you people. And he stomped out the door. He said, Armin, come out here. And I walked out the door and I said, boy, what's going on? He said, I scared him, didn't I? <laughs> so that was his way of having fun and joking. And I thought, he's just a fun guy. He was a nervous wreck. I mean, he, uh, he was very nervous. He, you know, he was kind of a fidgety guy anyway, but he was extra fidgety uh, leading up to it. And I think opening night, he was very... Uh, nervous and in preparation you know we got together almost a whole month of July in preparation for the show RCA had sent us a book of um, 50 songs and they said learn all 50 because we don't know which ones Elvis wants to use so we learned all 50 songs but uh, when we finally got together for rehearsals you know you could tell he was nervous in preparation he was at his very best I thought he he looked great. He had been in training. His weight was great. He looked, he, he was just at his very best. I think those were the best years. Yeah. 